Okay, let's uh, code it now. So we have added the com dot Microsoft dot Playwright uh, uh, dependency. Okay, so let's write our first code. Let's go to the package, say new class. And you can give any name. I am giving check to. Or let's say login page test. And uh, let's create the main function also. So this is the basic structure of any Java program that you have a class name, right? And then you have a main function. Execution starts with the main function. Fine. So this is the basic structure of any Java program. Now what to do? Because you have already Playwright uh, library with you, so you can use it. So you will say Playwright. So you will be creating instance of Playwright first. So you can say Playwright PW is equals to what we say Playwright dot create. Playwright dot create. Okay. So basically this create function will create an instance for the playwright. Now, so if this will be the very first line in your playwright code every time. Um, how you do it in Selenium, generally you do um, web driver, driver is equals to new driver, something like that, new Firefox driver, right? You get the um, control of the page then, right? Something similar here. But once you create the PW, then or this name is given by us. You can give any name, okay? Now you have to instantiate the page. So when we say instantiating the page, you get the control of page now. And obviously you have to provide what kind of browser you want to open, right? So um, I have that syntax with me. So now you will be, let me copy this thing. I'll explain what it is. So what we are doing now is, this is the code. We are saying pw.chromium. So it will open the Chromium browser, right? Which is um, like Google, what we say, Chrome engine, right? It's not Chrome browser. So under the same open source Chromium, there are a lot of other browsers also available, okay? So um, pw.chromium.launch, you have to call. And basically when you, you are launching it, there are options, right? So it, it's up to you. You, you, this is optional, right? What I'm doing here is there are launch options that I want to open it in, uh, UI mode. So if I'll not give this by default, Playwright opens the browser in headless mode, or it will not be visible to you when the execution will be there. Right. So we are opening it um, in head, uh, headless is false. That means it will open in browser properly. UI you will be able to see. So you have to import the browser from microsoft.playwright then <clears throat> once you have the browser instance with you now you have to work with the page so what you will say that okay i need my page to take over the control of that browser it's like this so you will say that page pg or you can make, give, give any name like my page my browser, anything you can give, right? So it's like page, you are creating one object here and having the control of that. That's it. Now what I want to do, let's set up our agenda, what we want to automate. So we want to go to this website. Let's assume we want to open this website. We want to click on this login link. And then we want to provide some user ID or email ID. And then we want to provide some wrong password. We want to click on login. 
and uh, this message should come. So we want to verify this message should come. So what is our step? Let's note down. Uh, we want to open website. Website. Which website? This one. HTTPS. Let's copy it from there so that there will be no spelling mistake. This one. We want to open this. Next, what we want to do? We want to click on login link. Click on login link. Then what we want to do? Uh, specify username or email and then specify password and then uh, click on login button and then um, check error message or we say validate validate the error message correct this is the manual step if you are writing your test cases probably you will write it like this in your test management tool uh, but now we are writing the code for the same thing. So what are the commands? So to open the website, the command is pg.navigate or the good part with um, Playwright is there are documentation available. So here, if you will search on any command like open website, I'm just doing some random thing here, right? But uh, there are commands, right? So navigate. If you want to search about, okay, how to write the syntax for this, you'll be able to see these things. So you'll be able to see, okay, page.navigate. You have to provide the URL. It's like this, right? Um, we are also using the same thing. So what I will write in the code is, to open this pg dot navigate which url you want to open this one so the same thing you have to provide in double quote this will open the website let's run this and check whether it is working fine or not run as java application let's see that <clears throat> yes it has opened see here it has opened this website done Done. Let's do the next thing now. What we want to do, we want to click on login link. So you have to inspect this login link basically. Right click here and find out this element uniquely. Now there are 10 to 15 different ways you can find an element. Okay, somebody was asking what is the difference here in Selenium and Playwright. Uh, again, Selenium has fixed set of locators, right? ID, XPath, uh, CSS selector, by tag name, uh, by link text, by partial link text. These are the things, right? Of course, you can write your own XPath in a good way to, to work with different kind of attribute, right? But Playwright has come with the set of different locators you can select the element by its um, op other options. So for example, here, there is a placeholder. So in Playwright, you have a command, find the element, get element by placeholder. That is there, right? Not exactly the syntax, what I'm saying, but there is a way to, to do it by placeholder also. And when you assert it, there are a lot of options available. Um, the way you assert or validate, okay? As of now, we are writing very simple code, not complex kind of thing. So let's inspect this login link again, this one. So it's saying there is an anchor element uh, which has a login as a text. That's it. So you can create XPath for this like slash slash anchor element where text is equal to login. See here, it's saying one of one. That means this is good. 
So you can use it in Playwright. You can say here, going to the code, no, you can no. say page dot locator. And here you don't have to say locate by Xpath, locate by CSS selector. It will automatically get to know. When you putting, you are putting two times slash or one time slash, it will automatically get to know that, okay, you want to um, work with the Xpath. Okay, so it has its intelligence to understand what you're using like this. I want to click on that. So one way is you store this element somewhere, right? So you can say locator, 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 login link is equals to this. Yes. And then once you have the control of it, you can say dot click. So dot because you want to click over the login link, this one, right? So you will perform click action. So once you click here, this page will come. And now let's inspect this. So here, uh, this element is, let's see this, what it is. This is input ID is equals to login email. So there is another way here in the code you can say. So now we are specifying the email, correct? So you say pg dot locator and you can say ID is equals to something, right? This is the ID. Fine. So dot. Now there is a function called type. So you want to type test at the rate test.com. Okay, let's see whether till this point it is working fine or not. Let's run this code. So this should open this website, clicking on the login. And then, uh, yeah, it was very fast. It has failed now. I am i don't think it's working. So let's see the error. Oh, till, till the five second, it will wait. So I'll show the error. If it will not work, hold on. The way we are using, maybe there is some syntax mistake. So how to overcome with that? Let's go here and search for document ID. Locate by ID. Locate by ID, do we have? Yes, ID is there. So you just have to say ID is equals to, it's not ID is equals to then single quote, okay? So going back and basically you say login is equals to login email, this one, that's it, okay? So if you see the error, it's saying that, it's saying that timeout after uh, 30,000 millisecond, which is 30 seconds. So it has tried for the 30 second. Uh, by default here it is doing in this way. And uh, Timeout error, it's saying, because it is not able to interact with that element, okay? So it's saying that waiting for this locator, which is not present, obviously, because there was a mistake from our end, okay? Let's stop this. I think now this should work. So I'll say run as our application again. Are we doing any mistake? Let's go back to their documentation page dot locator in double quote ID is equals to something. Fill value. So there are two functions, fill and type. There are two functions, anything you can use. There is a difference between type and fill. Uh, type will actually type means it will look like every character is typed. Whereas when you say fill, it will fill the value in one shot, whatever string you will give, okay? Going back to the UI, okay, it's not there. Let me go back to my code. Another way of doing it like this, you can, as of now, ID, maybe there are multiple IDs available for that. So instead of that, you can write it like this, pg.locator. Hash means ID. 
in CSS selector, the shortcut is hash. So this is like find any element which has ID is equals to login underscore email. And you can say type is equal to type and then whatever you want to provide. Same thing is with the password thing. Let's inspect it. Okay, inspect. It has ID is equals to login password, this one. So we can use that thing. We can again say pg dot locator hash. Okay, what is that login password? Okay. This one dot type and let's say ABCD. We are providing some random wrong password here. And then we want to click on the login, this link, this button. So let's inspect this. This is saying a button which has class is equal to something, which has type is equal to submit, something like that. So let's get it on uh, notepad and create a CSS selector for that. All these things about CSS selector locators, we will will understand when the course will start. But let's understand that I'm writing a CSS selector for this. So I'm saying find a button where type is equals to submit and, and the, the class attribute contains something. So I am not providing the whole class name. Let's say I'll provide this thing only as of now, which looks good that, okay, there is a class which contains BTN login. We should check whether this is unique or not. So let's put it here and you should get one of one. Then only it will work. So this is a good code. Let's go back and say pg dot locator and then this dot click because we want to click on that. So let's run till this point and check if it is working. Then only we will be able to check further things. Okay, it's opening. Yeah, it's working. Problem, problem, maybe uh, this time is like you have to wait for some element, right? It's like this. So it got this element, but it has skipped for some reason. So let's go back and stopping it here. Right. Uh, there is a mechanism where I can put, okay, wait for this for five seconds, 10 seconds as an option I can provide here. But, but that will become a bit difficult for the people who are seeing this very first time. So, 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 so what I want to do is I will put head dot sleep as of now. Uh, let's say four seconds so that, you know, you will be able to see that, okay, things are happening one by one. So I'm putting explicitly a sleep thing. Sleep means pausing your uh, action for some time. It's like this. Okay. So let's run this now. You'll be able to see one by one things will happen. Okay, it has opened. Now it should put, yes, tested test.com. Now it will, it should put the password, yes, ABCD. And then it should click on the login. I am not doing anything. Everything is happening on its own. Done. Now my next part is, okay, when you provide test at the rate test.com and then some password, you click on the login this error message should be displayed, right? So you have to inspect this element. So this is saying there is a span which has class indicator red, correct? So what code I can write to find this thing? Basically, I can say there is, there is, there is, hold on, hold on. So I'm just copying the, this part. Okay, what I want to do now? I want to find this. See, everything is the element. So I want to get that message. So this is a span where class contains indicator and class con contains red also. But I want to get the text of it. So in Playwright, the function is text contain. Okay. And this will give you a string. So let's store it in a string. Let's say string 
error message is equals to this and let's print this system dot out dot print and message so we want to get that message from the user interface and we want to print it in our code okay let's run this so this time what it, it will do it will provide the user id a wrong password clicking on the login some message will come we are capturing the text of that and we will assert it so for that you have to write the code again for the assertion part so if you see here see here i am able to capture this message that means we can assert it okay so to assert the things uh, you have to add one um import part again so let me show you quickly let me show you that part quickly okay you have to add import static playwright assertion assert that one of the assertion one of the assertion there may be other assertions also available so that you will be able to use assert that so here i can say assert that what i want to assert that um this locator this locator uh, 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 mm, contains text that you can use that okay this locator contains the error message so these two lines are not required now and uh, you can put your expected result now so this will be the actual result that it will find out the text and then you are checking okay this should contain this so in a single line you can do the assertion done let's run this again and uh, see what is happening see here it is executing this it will put the password it will click on login okay and let's see yeah test case is passed if anything will fail actually it will say that it is failed or anything fine let's make it fail so instead of this let's say just this invalid login i want to check whether it contains this text or not right so let's execute it again so this time we want our test case to fail because okay it's a contains text there is exact text also you can check okay this time probably it will pass because we are checking contains text has text basically you should check right so here going back here uh, and say assert that assert that locator so there are is visit there are a lot of functions there are a lot of functions page has title you can use it for the title check timeout check lot of things you can do this is related to url we want to check a text on a particular element correct so text assert text also you can write assert text Mm, sr that locator contains text actually we want to check this so there are a lot of ways to do that let's check the text part so th this is contains text this is has text this is contains text and has text so we should use has text actually okay so this is the way to do it has text we should use we should not use contains because contains will pass because the bigger error message which is there 
this one it contains invalid login i want to check the exact text of this correct so we should use this one as text is the function let's implement that instead of that we will say has text and a particular text so that text is let's assume half of it not exactly all the things okay and you can there are different ways to close the thing so basically you have to write pg.close br.close pw.close so you want to close the page instance browser and at the end you should close the playwright instance as well so this is like end of the test you do it so that your browser will be closed and all the created objects will also be closed let's see if it will work Yes, let's see. So this has come, but now it's waiting for that this particular has this particular text. Okay, so it waits for that. So you see here it's saying till the five seconds, 5,000 milliseconds. It was trying to have invalid again, login thing. But it's saying that locator expected to have text this but actually it receives this let's understand the error it's saying that in the user interface you have this but you want to check with this only that okay it should have that has the text this that's why it's failing because the complete text is this okay i did it explicitly so that you will understand how it is that's it about a simple test case which we have automated.